What's up everyone? It's the OOTP GM, and this is the 29th episode of my Detroit Tigers GM Let's Play here on Out of the Park Baseball 18. So we're here for the 2022 ALCS, our matchup with the Houston Astros. And as you can see, we're here at the uh, playoff coverage screen. Give you guys a quick preview of our matchup with the Astros before we get right into it. Uh, so we were 5-2 and two against the Astros this season. Uh, played them seven times, obviously. Uh, they were third in the AL in both runs scored and in runs against. So they had a pretty solid team all around. They also had uh, guys that played pretty well against us uh, during the regular season. You know, in the seven games that we did play. Some guys that struggled, but a lot of guys that played pretty well. Uh, we also had some guys that did really great. Uh, Cody Eves and Luis Santana just absolutely destroyed them during the season. Kendall, Stewart, uh, Guerrero. And Trout also played pretty well uh, as well. And our pitchers did pretty well, although Burroughs uh, and Slagers did pretty poorly in their starts. But everybody else did pretty well, it looks like. Fulmer was really excellent in his start. Duffy was really good in his start. And uh, Bueller was uh, not too bad, and he actually made two starts against them. So, anyways, uh, and then their, their guys, um, their starters did pretty good, it looks like, for the most part. Some of them struggled, but... Uh, we head into their team screen and take a look at uh, take a look at their team. So they are missing a few uh, a few guys. Uh, they have a couple of relievers. This uh, Chaz Roy, who doesn't look like he's a big part of the team, and then Michael Feliz are their two relievers injured. They also have this Juan Menavar uh, out. So these guys are out long term. And then this Ramon Rodriguez is only out for a couple more days. He's a young, talented left fielder. Although he only played in 10 games for them at the big league level this year, so I don't know how much, if at all, we're going to see him. But they are led by a pretty young, talented uh, group of players. They've got Alex Bregman. Um, I'm not sure where Correa is. I, I don't know. They might have. He might be gone at this point because we're in the year 20, 2022, so they must not have uh, Correa or Springer, it looks like, anymore. But they still obviously have a pretty good team. They got Bregman, they got Reed, they got this uh, Renegal uh, Martiz, who is probably going to be in contention for the um, for the MVP this year. 317, 415, 634 slash line. Uh, had 49 home runs, 124 RBIs. He had a really great season last year as well, actually. Uh, Bryce Harper just ended up winning the MVP. They got Kyle Tucker, who is an excellent center fielder. They got Miguel Sanu on their team as well. So they have pretty good, solid lineup top to bottom. And then their pitching staff is also pretty good. They have uh, Forrest Whitley, a young, he's a young uh, ace. They got Franklin Perez, he's another young pitcher. I believe Perez, if I'm not mistaken, is... I could be wrong about this, but I think he's one of the players that the Tigers actually got in the trade, uh, in the Verlander trade. I'm not 100% certain on that, um, but I believe that might be the case. And then they have uh, Jose Quintana and Chris Davinsky. So they have a really, really good uh, rotation here. And then their bullpen also has some pretty solid guys as well. They got Ryan Dull as their closer. They got Luis Avalon. They got uh, Evan Marshall. So they got some pretty solid guys. So it's, this is going to be a tough matchup for us uh, in this um, in this uh, in this matchup here. So. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and we will get into game one, which will be at home for us uh, versus Houston. We'll be uh, at Comerica Park, so it'll be uh, Michael Fulmer versus Forrest Whitley here. Going to head right in and get things started. Hopefully, uh, Fulmer can uh, give us a good give us a good start today because we're going to need it. So, all right, so let's get right into it. And Houston gets. Five runs in the top of the first. Holy cow. Uh, that's not the start that we were hoping for from Fulmer. Uh, already at 42 pitches, so it looks like we are going to be having to... I mean, he's going to have to get some distance for us, but that's not a way we wanted to start. Uh, so it's still 5 nothing. We don't have a hit through three innings. This is not This is not good so far. Another two runs for Houston. So unfortunately, Fulmer's day is going to be done. He's already at 92 pitches. We're going to have to have Duffy. Um, Duffy's going to have to uh, run this out for us because, unfortunately, Fulmer just not a very good start today. 
We finally get our first hit, but we are still down seven to nothing. So Fulmer, four innings, uh, seven earned runs. Not a good start for Mr. Fulmer today. And uh, so we are still down seven nothing through five. Well, we get three in the bottom of the six, so it's seven to three, trying to make things interesting. Duffy is doing okay right now. Let's uh, runners in scoring position. All right, so two outs, men on first and second. It looks like. Uh, so let's see if if he can get this last out of the seventh inning for us. And Duffy hits him. So now the bases are loaded for the Astros with two out. That'll bring up Bregman to the plate. So this is. And Duffy is exhausted, so we're going to try to get him through this batter. Hopefully he can. And Bregman looks like he hits a fly ball here to center. And it will be caught by Trout. So Duffy gets us three innings of work. And it is 7-3 uh, to three right now at the moment. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to get uh, another pitcher warming up here. Uh, we're going to get Altavia warming up. All right. We'll go ahead and see if we can get any more runs. So no, still seven to three. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put Altavia into the game. All right. So he allows a run. So it's now eight to three. Still eight to three. We're gonna let. Oh, Dragwire came into the game. So Altavia must have gotten hurt. Uh, yeah, Altavia did get hurt. That is unfortunate. All right. So we're just gonna let it go ahead and finish this game off. And we did get two in the bottom of the ninth there, but not we were down by so much I didn't think it was going to matter. So an 8-5 to five victory for the Houston Astros in Game 1 as they just beat Michael Fulmer up. Seven earned runs and only four innings of work. Also had four walks. Duffy had a pretty good three innings of relief, though, for us. Three hit innings of relief only allowed one hit uh, in that time frame. Three shutout uh, relief innings. So a little bit of a rough first start for us, but... Hopefully we can uh, come back and play better in game two. And uh, still waiting to see what Altavia's injury diagnosis is. So in the meantime, we'll have to pitch without him. Um, if his injury is something that's going to take him out for a while, we might be forced into using Sanchez for the next round. For you know, if we make it into the World Series, I don't. I wasn't. Uh, that's not ideal, but we might have to if we're going to be a man down. So, All right, so let's go ahead and head into game number two here. It'll be Quintana versus Bo Burrows here in game two. No lineup changes or anything like that for us. And let's see if we can get a win here in game number two. All right. No score through one. We get one in the bottom of the second. We get two in the bottom of the third, so it is three nothing through three. Bur Burrows is at 47 pitches, pitching a really good game. We get another one in the bottom of the fourth, so it is four nothing. Burrows is at 69 pitches. Let's do until runners in scoring position. He gets through that inning, so no runs for Houston through five. We get five in the bottom of the fifth, so a nice offensive outburst for us today. It is now nine to nothing. Burrows is at 81 pitches, so I'm going to go ahead and do runners in scoring position again. All right, so we got a man on we got men on first and third with one out. Burrows is at 89 pitches. Let's see if he can get out of this. And that looks like it's going to be a home run, and it is. Burrows allows a three-run home run to Jonathan Araz, I believe is how you pronounce that. So that is unfortunate. We do have a big lead, but it's now nine to three. Uh, let's see if Burrows can get out of the rest of this inning without any more trouble, and he does. So it is so nine to three. But uh, with that, 107 pitches for Burroughs. We're going to go ahead and get him out of there. And we're going to bring uh, Jimenez into the game. Next inning. All right. We get one more in the bottom of the six, so it's 10 to 3. Burrow gives us six innings of work, lost three earned runs. We're going to bring Jimenez in. All right. Yeah. We'll do half an inning for this. All right, so Jimenez allows two runs. Not ideal. Uh, but we are still up 10 to 5. Okay. Uh, Jimenez, one inning work. He was at 29 pitches. So we're going to have to get somebody warming up and keep an eye on him. So I'm going to put Gerson Batista. Or actually, you know what? Um, we're going to do AJ. Whoops. That's not going to be. There we go. AJ Minter up to warm up just in case this game gets a little bit tight. 
So we'll do until runners in scoring position. So, all right, so a nice solid inning of work there from Mr. Jimenez to get out of that. But we're going to put Minter into the game for him. We'll let Minter finish this off for us. All right, so it is 10 to 5. All right, so one out, men on uh, first and second. And let Minter, oh, wild pitch. That's not good. All right, so they move up to second and third, but we still have a five-run lead here. Now he's facing uh, Renegal Mar Martis. Uh, 3-0 count, and he walks him. So now bases are loaded with uh, one out. Kyle Tucker's at the plate. We are up by five. And Minter throws the pitch, and it is hit into the gap in right center. So that might clear the – nope, will not quite clear the bases. So it'll allow two runs, I believe. Cutoff man, no chance at second, Martis at third. Yeah, so score two runs there. All right, so now, with that being the case, I'm going to have to get second rider warming up, who I was hoping not to have to use in this game, but I might have to, depending on what happens here. All right, so Minter, one-two count, and he strikes out uh, Araz. All right, so let's see if he can get past this without having us to use uh, Mr. Second rider. All right, next guy up, Stubbs, and hits it to the shortstop, and that'll be a ground out. And the Tigers do manage to win game number two, 10-7. to 7. Things got a little interesting there at the end, but now the series is tied one game apiece. We got a good start from Mr. Burroughs in that game, so that was good. Unfortunately, uh, Jimenez and Minter both kind of struggled there, but we didn't give them enough run support to get the win, so it is 10-7 to 7 now. And we will move forward here. All right, so Altavia just has a day-to-day -day injury back spasms, which is good. So we won't have to worry about bringing uh, we won't have to worry about bringing uh, Sanchez back if we don't want to. So that's that's good to see. All right, so now we will move into he's eligible to come off the disabled list. We'll have to put him on the active roster, which is fine. Okay, so now we are going to be going into Game Three at Houston. Let's just get a quick update on how things are going. Uh, the Phillies. Have a 3 0 lead over the Dodgers. Wow, this would be a pretty big upset. I mean, I know the Phillies have a decent team, but this would be a big upset if the Phillies end up beating the Dodgers. They would be the first team, not the Dodgers or the Mets, to be in the World Series since we started this. Since we started in 2017, it has either been the Mets or the Dodgers in the World Series uh, for the NL. So this would be a big upset in a lot of ways if the Phillies uh, won this. You know, you can see they were a pretty good team, but still, this is. This is big. So, all right, so we're going to go into game number three. Uh, we are at Houston, and it'll be Walker Bueller against Franklin Perez. I'm not going to make any lineup changes currently, although I am tempted to move Vasquez up in the lineup. I'm going to leave it alone for one more game. I want to see what happens with us here. So, but all right, I'm going to get into game number three here. And uh, on the road, let's see if we can get a win and make it 2-1. All right, no score through one. Houston gets one in the bottom of the second. So one to nothing through three. We get nothing in the top of the fourth. Bueller's at 50 pitches. All right, so it is still one to nothing through four. Still one to nothing through four and a half. Bueller's at 58 pitches. All right, so he allows two in the bottom of the fifth, so it's now three nothing Houston. Franklin Perez at 82. All right, so we get one in the top of the sixth. Uh, Bueller's at 78 pitches, so we're going to do until runners in scoring position. All right, so we got uh, man on first and second with one out. Sano at the plate. See how Bueller does here. 2-2 two -two count. Deep shot to center, but it looks like it will be caught by Trout. And it will. They're going to try to take up to third, and he's out. Wow. What a throw from Trout. Gets the guy taking up to third, and that will end the inning. Wow, what a great. Great defensive play out there. Uh, but with that, uh, Bueller at 98 pitches. We're going to go ahead, and I'm not going to take any chances because I have made mistakes in the past doing that. And uh, we're going to get Dragmire warming up. He's going to take Bueller's place uh, in the next inning. All right, so we don't get anything in the top of the seventh. So it's still a 3-1 to one game. We're going to go ahead and put Dragmire into the game. All right, let's see how he does this happening. Okay, no score. So we are now... In the top of the eighth, I'm going to do runners in scoring position now, see if we can get something going here. And we do not. So it is still 3-1 to one through 7.5. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning. 
And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if Dragmar can get through this for us. And he does not. He allows two runs in the bottom of the eighth. That is not good. Um, and he still can't get out of the inning. So now we got a man on second. 2-2 two -two count, one out. Uh, Stubbs up. And he will hit it through on the right side. And that's going to score another run. So it is now 6-1. to one. As Dragmeyer is falling apart here in the bottom of the eighth, and I'm going to have to get somebody warming up to get him out of there because that is not going well. I hate to do this because I don't want to burn my bullpen out, especially in a losing effort, but um, we're going to get Kella warming up because we got to get somebody out of there because it looks like Dragmeyer is just blowing up in front of our eyes. And he walks the batter, so there's going to be first and second with one out now. Sanchez up to bat. He does manage to strike him out. All right, so let's see. He's at 30 pitches. How is Kella? Kella's still warming up. So let's see if Dragmar can get this out. And he does with a ground out back to him at the mound. But he lost three runs in the bottom of the eighth. It is now 6-1 to one Houston, which is not good for us. Uh, I will put Kella into the game just in case we need him, although we're going to need five runs here to tie this game up. Let's do until runners in the scoring position. We don't get anything. So Houston takes game three, six to one. They take a two to one lead in the ALCS now. And uh, really just we were shut down by their pitching. Uh, you see Harper was the only one who had any success today at all. We only managed four hits uh, the entire day. Their bullpen just shut us down. So uh, we are struggling so far. Other than that offensive outburst, really, in game number two, we've kind of struggled. So I mean, we did have five runs in game one, but... Still has not, has not gone very well. All right, now we do have a big decision here. Fiedo is...